Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 308, with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 308. And before we get things started off, let's kick it off with something a little bit fun, a little bit loose to bring the mood up. So I'm not, you know, constantly talking about fucking COVID-19. I'm not going to solve anything here. Um, I'm no voice of reason. So why not? Let's get a bit silly. I'll admit it. I will eat my neighbors. I'm not letting my kids die. I'm just going to be honest. My superpowers being honest, I've extrapolated this out, and I won't have to for a few years since I got food and stuff, but I'm literally looking at my neighbors now and going, I'm ready to hang them up and gut them and skin them and chop them up. You know what? I'm ready. My daughters aren't starving to death. I'll eat my neighbors. See, my superpowers being honest, I'll eat your ass. I will. <laughs> I'm combat model, optimum self-sufficiency, probably the leader. The point is, is have you thought about that yet? Because I'm somebody that thought I could fix this, and I'm starting to think about having to eat my neighbors. You think I like sizing up my neighbor, how I'm going to haul him up by a chain and chop his ass up? I'll do it. My children aren't going hungry. I will eat your ass. And that's why I want the globalists to know I will eat your ass first. The, the globalists are shaking in their boots and in case you're wondering if you're listening via the audio podcast that was the one alex jones um still of the alex jones what's that was it called again is it called the uh, info wars remember info wars um i miss him on youtube man it was a real shame that he got he was a kind of sacrificial lamb um and he kind of got completely deleted from the you know from the public conversation due to his twitter his youtube his patreon every kind of you know um social media-esque platform or crowdfunding platform he was basically kicked off of obviously you can't blame anyone in it when you go around saying that the covenant was it that school shooting thing wasn't true or the kids didn't actually die and or uh, they were kind of bored what were they called disaster artists or whatever some stupid thing he said so you know the fact that he got deleted might not have been that much of a surprise but a part of me kind of longs for his chaos longs for his um frantic psychotic nature to somehow still be streaming live on youtube there's still quite a lot of channels actually that are reposting rebroadcasting a lot of his content on there so if you want to get your dose of info wars you can find it i don't know why you do that but if you do want to go and kind of go through that rabbit hole you can but i'm um, talking about eating your neighbors i'm not too sure if i would um i don't think we'd get to that place in the uk i think if if i could if i had to entertain it for the sake of it it would be quite difficult where i live because i'm not too sure how many neighbors we do have in this building um they doesn't seem to you know when you start, you know sometimes even now with the lockdown and i go out for a run in the morning and i come back i don't bump into any of my neighbors i don't ever see them um obviously during the work week it's quite hard to see anybody because usually all leave at the same time between i say the hours of like let's say seven and nine everyone's like coming in and out of this flat trying to go you know commuting to work and on the way back people have different timetables right some people might have kids they pick up before they um before they get home some people might go somewhere else and meet some friends you know the home time's a bit hard to judge but generally when i do come back around f- between the hours of i say half four to half six there still isn't that many people coming into my building so i don't really know how many people actually live here um i'm not sure if many, everyone here happens to be a youtuber or if they're just pff, not really that bothered about coming outside but it'd be quite hard to locate them and so if, if i couldn't even in my building i'd have to go outside and outside is a complete roll of dice because the area that i live in is just full it's absolutely teeming full to the brim of crackheads they're everywhere in the area that i live they're fucking everywhere they do that thing where they all walk in a line together like they're marching somewhere um it's super funny because i didn't really re- i didn't know what crackheads looked like prior to coming here i guess because part of the part of the reason why because sometimes you, the lines get blurred between crackhead and homeless bro they're obviously still in the same situation it's unlikely you're gonna find a crackhead who's got you know living in a free bedroom apartment somewhere but for the most part it's quite hard to judge because you know if you hang around let's say trendy areas where bars and clubs are you might bump into a few homeless people right because they usually go around those kind of areas to panhandle you know and just generally i don't know maybe get some shelter in some places that might be that might have a kind of a roofing for the doorway i don't know you generally see a lot of homeless people around you know clubby sort of areas that i would hang out at night but you don't see you don't necessarily see a lot of crackheads but when you go to ends and you go to kind of quote unquote the hoods of london that's where you see the crackheads because usually that's where all the drug dealers are 
So it's quite hard to discern what they look like. But once you see them, you know you can make a delineation between the two. Usually in a crackhead crew, there's a couple of girls in there who are, I would assume, putting out for the crew, right? When they need to get a hit, she's the one that has to kind of sacrifice her, you know, her butthole or her mouth for the benefit of the group. Um, there's usually some guy carrying a big bag, whether it's a kind of Ghana must go bag, an Ikea bag. There's always some sort of big bag that's like, that it's a kind of bag that if a regular person was carrying it, they'd have that kind of, you know, carrying shopping face. Like, <laughs> But when a crackhead's carrying it, it's just a bag. And they always you seem to have it on a bike. The bike usually, more often than not, has, you know, there's some sort of deficiency. There's some sort of DIY hack on the bike. Whether the seat is a sponge or the handlebars are, uh, is like some, some, some metal bar that he just pulled off of a gate somewhere. There's always some sort of, like, weird thing going on with the bike. And then another thing I noticed is that, they tend to not have their shoes for long. I'm not sure if they get jacked or it's because they sell them so they can get money, but I don't see a lot of crackers with, you know, trainers. They usually tend to walk around here with bare feet, so that's a bit of an issue. So having to eat someone like that, I don't know, I'd rather take my chance at hunger. Eating a cracker will be like, you know, sort of like, you know when you have to eat like um those, you know when you, you, know when you buy a couple of avocados if you get about them and they go a bit moldy and you have to try and scavenge the good bits of the avocado out of the, all the mold that's what i imagine eating a cracker they'll be like you'd have to somehow claw through all the piss and the wetness and the you know whatever the gravel and all that nonsense to get to the good bits of meat and by the time you get to it that vision of the person's face in your head can't get out and you end up barfing all over your chest or all onto your kids and then somehow because you're so starving your kids have to pick up the bath and then eat that to get some sort of satisfaction it'll be a complete horror show so yeah no i can't eat my neighbors i think if i lived in labrook grove or notting hill or if i lived somewhere in elephant castle where all the like voluptuous you know kind of uh uh the voluptuous latina latina girls live right latinx girls live or west london where all the kind of like chubby white girls live then maybe that would be quite cool because you know there's a lot of fat there i'm assuming there's a lot of um yeah a lot of fats i can probably delve into a lot of those girls have quite good you know diets or their affluence so there's a lot of nice food going into their body so they're nice and tender that would be about it but i wouldn't eat anybody in east east is a bad place to come eat somebody so if you are gonna get stranded in a world war z situation with no one around and no resources don't do it anywhere near where i live do it somewhere else where there's a population that you know you can kind of quote unquote bite into no pun intended 